this. Uh, no intention no, to ban. No intention to ban the. They just said there's no intention of banning cryptocurrency from the chairman of the Federal Reserve, guys. That is definitely a big deal. This video, we're going to go over a very bullish case for October, see what we should expect in October, and, you know, go from there. Look at the bulls, look at the bears, and then we can make our own analysis, our own decisions with our own portfolios of what we think we should do. So if you guys like that content, definitely consider smacking that like button. And if you're new, welcome consider subscribing. So let's just get right into it. As we can see, Mr. Whale at Crypto Whale on the tweeters. He posted this little video here. I'm not gonna go over the whole thing, but the main highlight is that the chairman of the Federal Reserve just said, quote, we have no intent to ban cryptocurrency. I don't know you guys, that's very, very bullish. So up next, what should we expect in October? We wanna go check out you know, the good old monthly returns going all the way back to 20. 13. So this is from Blackbeard at Crypto Blackbeard. He says, Rectember is coming to an end and hopefully Uptober will treat us right. You know, let's go. I'm liking the Rectember and I'm liking the Uptober. So guys, let's check this out, see what's going on here. We click on this, get an enlarge, get my face out of the way. As we can see here, guys, in September, historically on the monthly, oh my goodness, look at that. Do you see this column? There's only, only two. Only two green days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven red ones. Thank you, Becky. I know how to count to seven now. Seven red monthly candles in September. But look at this for October. Oh, look at that. There's only two red. But look for November. Only two red. So historically, October and November are both very green. That's why he called it Rectember and he called it October. You guys let me know what we should rename November down below. This is very bullish. Definitely exciting to see you guys. Histor history says, history says that we should probably see a green month. Um, definitely bullish. I'd like to see that. But of course, we're going to check on a few more things and get going from there. So something I posted in the Patreon back, I think it was on the September 27th, was this thing right here, guys. We we're comparing the daily price action back in August and September 2017 to current time. Keep in mind, back in September 2017, China hit the good old China FUD once again. We're banning crypto, crypto's banned. They just threw the ban hammer, I mean, for like the millionth time, it's nothing new. If you're new to crypto, you're gonna find out very, very soon, this is nothing new. They ban crypto every other day. It's just basically how it goes, but it's just something the media uses to pretty much dump and manipulate the market. I believe insiders are filling their bags when they do this. So let's head to the charts and see what we see here. Guys, I wanna point out this right here to the left is 2017. We got July 2017 right there where the cursor's at. We scroll all the way up, look at this right here, September 2017. That's the beginning of September, September 2nd. Look what happened in, in September of 2017. We'll get a nice measure move there from wick to wick. Nice 40% correction. Oh my goodness. What happened? Bull run over? I don't know. Well, if we continue on, obviously we hit 20K. So, I mean, it was a nice run. The point though is, look, end of July to begin to begin of September was very, very bullish, a nice bullish run, then we fell down. Well, what happened in 2021? End of July, look at this right here. End of July on, on the right, right there at the bottom of, uh, like of the screen, we rallied into the beginning of September. And then what happened? Let's take another yet, another measure move from wick to wick. 25% correction this time. Already, guys, definitely a different percentage. We, we see that already. But the whole structure, though, we, we rallied here, rallied here, came down, we came down. Well, and according to Rectember and October's history, what should we expect in October? You guys let me know. Uh, I'm pretty sure we should expect some higher price action according to this analysis right here. But you let me know what you believe down below. That's another very, very nice chart to see right there. Very bullish. Um, heading over there, we got some more good old news about ETFs in October. You know, the Gensler, you know, the guy he's, you know, we're not too fond of right now. He reiterates support for futures based Bitcoin ETFs. The SEC chairman struck a similar tone in August, igniting a rush in, in a, a tailor made ETF filings. Scroll down to see, guys. Pretty cool to see that they're working on a potential ETF to be coming in October. This is very bullish. Getting an ETF for Bitcoin in the United States of Americas will be very bullish. They have them in other countries, but for some reason, America is, uh, you know, slagging their feet. We scroll down here. They mentioned Eric. Don't know how to say his last name, so I'm not even going to try, but he's an 
analyst from Bloomberg. We're, we're gonna go hit up his good old tweets right here. So right here, he says, the Bitcoin futures mutual fund that launched two months ago only has 15 million in assets under management. Very low considering the pent up demand. Here's a look at the first 43 days of BTCFX versus a BTCC physical in Canada, A, eh? Whose market is 25X smaller, by the way. Not sure if uh, the mutual fund or futures is a problem, but POS bad sign. So basically just saying there's not that much interest, okay? Not much interest. We're going down, we're, we're continuing this. It says the lack of interest is also despite the fact that it tracks spot BTC really well, which is arguably welcomes new, welcome news for future ETFs. Um, he says he adds that GBTC out of the GBTC so you could see the difference. You'd think they would get more looks. I'm a little stunned, frankly. So basically he's just saying that they're not really getting it. It's not hyped up. They're not getting all the looks. But going on, th this is the juicy part, guys. So hold on. It says the lack of the interest may actually calm SEC a bit, you know, who probably worry about too much rush and ETFs. Too much rush? If you've been around the crypto space, you know we've been trying to get one for years. Literally years. It's been, it's been hyped for years. It's crazy. So they're definitely not Russian. But it says thus, we sticking with our 75% chance that a Bitcoin futures ETF is approved and launches in October slash November with ProShares as a huge favorite to be out first. Guys, he just said 75% chance that a Bitcoin futures ETF is approved and launches in October and November. Uh, that sounds good to me. And he says they really like the pro shares, the one you see right here. They really like that one. End of the day, though, <laughs> who really cares which one passes? At the end of the day, as long as it's a physically backed one, I mean, I, I know this is Bitcoin futures ETF, but as long as they're somewhere, it's actually tied physically with Bitcoin where they can't just manipulate the market. To me, that's uber, uber bullish. So I'm pretty excited to see that. I know I've listened to, um, it was good old Tom Lee from, from uh, Fundstrat. He claims that once an BTF, a, <laughs> BTF, a Bitcoin ETF launches, we will end up seeing the price action of Bitcoin go from, he said at the time, 6000 to $150,000. And that's not some moon boy stuff right there. That's some real stuff based off data. He, the guy's a genius. He started Funstrat. Look it up. Uh, but guys, that's pretty bullish right there. ETF incoming. I uh, also want to point out, since we know that, you know, America, they're slack a lot lacking with ETFs. I mean, we're just, you know, like putting down the band hammer almost, even though in the beginning we just said, you know, there's no band hammer being tossed. But uh, they're really slacking with, the, with allowing the innovation. From Yahoo Finance, they said, first ETF coming to Bitcoin and Ethereum launches in Canada, eh? Scrolling down here, it says, the new ETF from Evolve ETFs trades under the ticker ETC on the TSX and is Canada's first multi-ETF. Guys, it will hold the world's two largest cryptocurrencies weighted by the market capitalization, which is 67% Bitcoin and 33% Ethereum. I thought if, I thought there was all these Ethereum killers. Why, why is, I think we should tell them they need to get Cardano on there. They need to get Avalanche. What about Polkadot? I, I, don't they know about these Ethereum killers? There's some issues there. You might, you might wanna talk to Canada, eh? But I look at that, guys, pretty exciting. You know, as America can't even decide to make one, Canada, I mean, they're like, you know what? Bring on Ethereum, bring on Bitcoin, let's go. Next up, maybe ADA, maybe XRP, maybe they'll get a Dogecoin one, who really knows? Uh, pretty exciting though, if you ask me. So guys, that's all very, 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 very bullish. And my humble opinion, um, I definitely like that, guys. But of course, we gotta look at some things that are not so um, bullish. So um, for some people, this may be a viewer discretion advice. So sit down and relax. Becky, just calm down. Everything will be all right. As we go over here, guys, the Gaussian channel, we talked about a lot on this channel. You know, look at this, guys. We'll go down memory lane a little bit, guys. I was back in, uh, it was um, summer 2019. I was like, oh, we're gonna go to the moon. You know, we came up here, hit about almost 14K coming down. I was like, oh, guess what, guys? This is totally just a buy the dip scenario. We're going to the moon. Oh, we fall down deeper. <sighs> buy the dip, don't worry. Somebody said this thing about this Gaussian channel. I was like, they don't know what they're talking about. Those silly gooses. Well, guess what, guys? We fell to the bottom of the Gaussian channel. Came back up, we got a candle close above. It was like, okay, we're out of the Gaussian channel. Thank, just, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful we're gonna go to the moon. <laughs> Yeah, did not happen though, because the rest is history. You guys can see right there. 
And we can go back and I can show you again and again, which we have on this channel, and that's not what this video is about. This video just shows us what's going on currently right now, what should we expect in October. So as we see here, you know, currently guys, we fell in the Gaussian channel. We did not fall below the Gaussian channel, which that's what we need to reset to get the next major move. So we did rally up, we closed not one, not two. Woo, we got a couple candles above there. That was pretty nice to see. I was pretty excited, not gonna lie. And this candle, the one that fell underneath, it only fell underneath within the last 24 hours. Guys, these are five day candles. So this is a macro perspective. As you can see, we fell right to the median line right there, bounced right up, played between 48 all the way down to 39.5. Now, as you can see here, we are just playing around here uh, like up next, just playing here. We're above the median line, which is great to see. We'll see what's gonna happen. Will we end up breaking this, falling down to the floor, which would put us down around $30,000? Or are we gonna break through, and, and will this be the first time in Bitcoin's history that we ended up breaking this pattern that Bitcoin's has not broken since the history of Bitcoin? It's always followed this. Will this be the first time? It's definitely a possibility, but I'd love to know your thoughts down below. And up next, guys, in October, in order for all this bullishness to come through, through fruition, we must, we must get through the 50 daily moving average. We must get through the 200 daily moving average. This must happen, guys. You want to look for that to happen. Currently, the 200 daily moving average is $45,239 at the time of this recording. And the 50 is 46.5 at the time of this recording. So we want to get through there. Currently right now, we're seeing some nice price action. Um, we, we've seen us broke through 44,000, we came back down. Of course, we still have about three hours for close, guys. We'll see how it plays out. We're live Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, so definitely stay tuned for that. But of course, guys, these are just some bullish and some bearish scenarios. Um, I don't know, guys, we have a lot of bullish stuff, guys. We have a lot of bullish stuff going back to the good old history. Look at that. October, and you guys let me know what we should rename November, um, the, and you guys let like let me know with that. But guys, September is usually Rectember, October is October, so that's looking pretty good. Also nice to, to hear from the chairman of the Federal Reserve, we have no intent to ban cryptocurrency. Pretty freaking exciting, if you ask me, guys. I'm pretty pumped for crypto, um, and you know we, we will go from there. But that's all I got for today, guys. I, I just wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in. Smack the subscribe button if you're new here, smack that like button, and let me know your thoughts down below. Low. And you know how it goes around here. You know, it's all about the wild crypto journey because, you know, until next time, may those gains be with you.